Welcome to Maverick University, an educational series featuring ministry modules taught by ministry-minded Christians and designed to help Christians become more effective in their service for Christ. Welcome to another edition of Maverick University. I'm your host, David Hallberg. Joining me today is Pastor Jeremy Houston, pastor of Foundation Baptist Church. Uh, in the description below, you can find all of our conversations with Pastor Houston as we discuss church planting and everything pastoral. Uh, so thanks for coming on with us, Brother Houston. Uh, we're gonna be talking today about the bivocational pastor. Um, and I guess this, topic of being bivocational doesn't just apply to pastors themselves, it can apply to anybody that's involved in ministry. Um, so as a church planner, obviously there's a time where the church is small, it's growing, it's struggling, and the income is not coming from the church itself, and you've got to do something on the side or do something not on the side, <laughs> uh, to make ends meet. So let's st to start by defining what we even mean by bivocational pastor and how does that differ from other types of things? Usually when you're a bivocational pastor, you kind of feel like the pastoring part is almost your second job because you do have to punch a time clock for somebody else. And uh, then there's other times when it's just to kind of make the ends meet and uh, I think it's very important that we understand that bivocational is um, not abnormal in society in general. There's guys that get sure. second jobs for multiple different reasons. And so it does not diminish your first job or your first calling. Uh, Jesus was recognized by the people of uh, Nazareth as, is not this the carpenter? And are not his mother and brethren with us? And so Jesus had a, uh, a trade that he had lived in and worked in up until the time that he started his earthly ministry. There's nothing wrong with a pastor having the ability uh, to have a trade or, or to work and make some other income. Um, of course, I went to Bible college and, and my training was in ministry and uh, I didn't have a trades, uh, you know, a, background or anything like that, but I, I've worked multiple different jobs as we were starting in church. Um, I actually, before I became a pastor, I was an assistant pastor and I worked uh, at a clothing store and I worked um, driving a school bus and I worked at a, a parts store um, for a while. So there were, there were things that I did as an assistant pastor, but uh, the, the, the point of the matter is ministry is a calling it's uh, not a career. Um, and so there can be multiple things that you can do as a pastor, um, kind of to make ends meet on the side, but also don't lose the focus of what God's called you to do. And I think that that sometimes becomes the frustration of bivocational pastoring is that some men are going to get caught up in what should be a side job or a secondary focus and it becomes their main their main focus and so we've got to make sure that as a pastor as somebody who's in ministry that we never lose sight of the purpose of life I remember hearing a message when I was a teenager about Jesus being the carpenter and uh, the preacher said he did not let his profession get in the way of his purpose and I believe that we can't let a profession get in the way of our purpose our purpose is Christians uh, is to be ambassadors for Christ in general. And then the other aspect as a pastor, of course, is to feed the flock of God, make a difference, uh, reach people the gospel of Jesus Christ. And sometimes you can do that maybe even more effectively in some towns um, by vocationally. Maybe, maybe you get out of your office a little bit more. Maybe you talk to more people. Um, so there is, there is some that actually use by vocation as a... Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the word, as their, I guess their, oh, what's the word? Is it their avenue for? Kind of the avenue. They, they use it because they know that they know that it's going to get them into the community more. Mm -hmm. And then there's others that, like myself, I would much rather be in an avenue knocking doors or talking to somebody on the street mm -hmm. about the Lord um, rather than maybe, you know, meeting somebody in a business type setting. Um, but at the same time, 
there needed to be extra income. And the burden of proof uh, on a man is to take care of his family. And so I needed, I needed to do that. Um, I have a friend in North Carolina. He's an older man. Um, he probably wouldn't like me saying that if he watches this, but uh, his name is Pastor Fred Daniel. He's in his 60s, and he, he said this to me, and I thought this was a good statement. Every group of believers organized as a church, even in the smallest, most remote circumstance, deserves a good, faithful pastor. And so the point of the matter is, no matter where you are, no matter what God's called you to, God might have called you to a town of 120 people and you pastor a church of 15. Mm -hmm. And maybe that church of 15 cannot pay you full time, but God called you there and you know it. Then they still deserve a good and faithful pastor who is willing to pay a little bit of a price to be there. Paul was a tent maker. Mm -hmm. He said, you should have been caring for me. They that preach the gospel should live of the gospel. I believe that that is a biblical principle. Those that receive spiritual help should also minister in carnal ways uh, to a pastor, just like they did in the Old Testament with the priests. And so I believe that it is a preacher's focus to get to a place where he can minister to people full time. But at the same time, if you're not there yet, don't get upset because it is not always the case. It's not always able to be the case. But let's talk about the culture initially. Um, there's a stigma associated with being bivocational that we really need to get rid of. Well, certainly. I mean, you think, you know, oh, he's a bivocational pastor. Then what's the problem? You know? Yeah. Why, why, why is, you know, is God not, is God not blessing his ministry? Uh, is he not reaching enough people? Is he lazy? Is there a reason why his church is not able to take care of him full time like another church would be able to take care of someone full time? Um, and sometimes even as pastors, you kind of get those thoughts in the back of your mind. You go, man, what's wrong with me? You know, why is God not blessing? Uh, but the Bible says, be not weary in well-doing. In due season we shall reap if we faint not. And so I've found out that, you know, as a church planter, mm -hmm. um, starting something from scratch, you know, it, it could take about a thousand doors not to even maybe get one visitor. And you go, wow, uh, this is an awful lot of work to try to get one. And, and then that one visitor may never come back. And then you go out and knock another thousand doors to get another visitor. And it took a long time to, to see God uh, build his church, but God builds the church. Can we talk practicality and just sure. personal testimony? If you're working a punch in a clock, then when, how do you manage to knock those thousand doors? and you know, make contacts with people too. My initial job, um, I started a few, uh, maybe two months after we started the church. Um, I didn't want to start a, start a job while we were knocking doors trying to get the church started. Uh, first of all, I was just hoping that God would bring enough people in that we'd be able to go full time from the start. Um, I, I knew that was probably a little bit um, optimistic, but at the same time, I got a big God. And if it's God's will, it's God's bill. And so <laughs> there's there's some things that you look to and you go, Lord, you know, I know you can you, you own the cattle on a thousand hills, you can do anything. And I believe that there's nothing wrong with a man who starts out that way and sees that happen. I think that's awesome. I think it's wonderful. And I I don't really I'm not really jealous of that. A little bit at times I've been, you know, man, why does he get it from the start? Uh, but God has used this time in my life, you know, I've been pastor now 11 years. God's used this time in my life to teach me to rely upon Him. And, you know, sometimes you, you go, well, God, I was relying on you to, to meet my needs. He goes, yeah, I gave you two hands and, and, some, and some legs that work. And, and you, can, you, can, you can use your, your body as, and your ability to make ends meet. And, uh, but sometimes you, you don't want to maybe sacrifice to that extent. But God gave me a job working overnights for 20 months. And so I worked at a hotel uh, overnights and um, it gave me an opportunity to work, do, do the security aspect of, of a hotel, do the night auditor position, check people in and out of rooms, you know, set out breakfast, things like that. But there was also some downtime that I was able to uh, pray and study and, and prepare for messages and uh, so I was able to maybe cut out some of the office hour aspect of being a pastor. Sure. I was able to do some of that on a work base, uh, you know, work time. 
Um, obviously getting my work done, making sure that was the first priority at my job. Um, but I was able to do some of that and then also use some of the other time that you would maybe be in an office on a daily basis and you know, go home, get some sleep, and then get out and be able to knock some doors, uh, try to reach the people that we could. And uh, it was slow, it's, it, it's been slow. I feel like it's been slow the whole time. Um, but I, I do believe this, that we never know when due season is until it suddenly comes. And uh, if you don't know harvest time, if, if you've never you know, understood the germination process of something, you know, it, it goes into the ground and it dies and then it has to come back and then at some point it brings forth fruit. Well, in ministry, that's not always the same time. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you feel like, Lord, isn't it about time? Uh, but, but things come to fruition, but you do have to trust God and you have to work. There's work involved yeah. in ministry. And so ministry is not punch the clock, but there is something about punch the clock. There is something about you have to put the time in, to put the effort in. Sure. And so there is that aspect. I think that sometimes though we reduce ministry to punch the clock, but ministry is meeting needs and investing in others and for eternity. And so sometimes you don't know which person you're investing in that God's really going to use in such a way that would be a huge blessing to the ministry. And uh, sometimes you feel like, am I, am I wasting my time? And then God shows you that working for Him, doing something uh, with Him as your focus is never a waste of time. And so there are times when you, when you realize, I'm at work right now and I'd rather be doing something else. But this is where God has me. So I'm going to be all here. Um, I, there's no doubt that Elisha, while he was pouring water on Elijah's hands for 10 years, was sometimes frustrated. I mean, Elijah came along one day and he threw his mantle on me and I was going to be uh, the, the prophet in his room. And, and what am I doing? Why am I here? Why, why am I still doing this service? And it seems like God's not ever going to use me in the way that I felt like he would. But we don't have God's mind except for the word of God to know that God does things in different ways than we do. A different timetable. Time and when is he going to come through? In his time. Mm -hmm. And he makes everything beautiful in his time. And he does it all that men might fear before him. And so I believe that God works in a man's life to get him to a place where God can also um, do a work, not just in him, but through him and in the benefit of others. And so I believe ministry is a calling. If you work a second job, it doesn't mean that, you're, uh, that your career is focused uh, or your focus is career first. It might just mean that, you're, that you understand that your responsibility to the Lord's leading in your life um, is something that you're willing to say, okay, Lord, I'll sacrifice for this because I believe that this is your calling for me. Mm -hmm. And the other aspect of it is um, God gave you your wife and God gave you your children. You need to meet their needs. They have basic necessities. Mm -hmm. You don't have to meet their every whim, but you do need to meet the things that are, are needful for them. Yeah. And so sometimes that does take a little bit of an extra, okay, how can I make a little extra money this month? Or how can I make a little extra money this year? Mm -hmm. You know, how can we afford to pay for Christian school? Or, you know, what can we do to replace an aging car? Um, what can we do to replace a couch that, you know, the springs are coming up through and, it, and you know, it's, it's cutting our clothes or poking our, poking our seats when we sit down, you know? There's some things you have to try to figure out. There's nothing wrong with having a bivocational perspective as long as you don't forget your purpose. It can't override it. It can't, be, it can't define who you are. No, you know, I would talk to people. They'd come in at the front desk when I was, when I was uh, working overnight at the hotel, or I drove a school bus for uh, six different years, not the whole years, um, but six different years. And um, I'd tell people I was a pastor, and they kind of look at me like, no, you're not. You're a bus driver. I'm a pastor. This, this is not what God called me to do. This is what God allows me to do. This is what God is using to help my family make ends meet. But I'm a pastor, and you know I, I love the church, and I, I love the sheep that God allows me to be His under shepherd for. And and there's there's a there's a focus that needs to ma be maintained if you're bivocational. I think that sometimes we we almost get more stigmatized from other pastors than we do from the society around us. Uh, a pastor kind of looks at you like, you're not really a pastor. 
if you're not full time. And that's a shame because I mean, every pastor, I'm not, maybe not every, but surely we've all had financial difficulties and had to, you know, split our attention between you know different income streams. But but sometimes I think it's because they feel like they've been able to maintain a more level of full time, mm -hmm. where they they do something on the part time, mm -hmm. whereas some men have to be full time on a job versus you know part time on on a ministry or whatever and so who should who should take the burden for providing for the family let's not leave it on our wife let's make sure that as men we can include her in that if she wants to be included in that maybe there's different aspects of children in the home children not in the home children in school you know there might be a way that you can make money from home mm -hmm. but let's not leave the burden of providing for the family on our wife um, she's got a lot on her plate yeah. being a pastor's wife um, being a mother, being my wife, my wife is, you know, being my wife is, is, is not always easy either. And so I didn't want to leave the burden of, of making ends meet on her. So I said, I'd rather me work a second job than you have to go out and, and work to make sure our family is cared for. Well, thank you so much for sharing, being honest and transparent with your uh, situation there. And now um, the church um, obviously, you know, you started it and you're reaching people and they need to be discipled, right? right? And so teaching them to give teaching is them. also part of the... Uh, we don't teach them to give just for you, you teach them to give for God. Yeah. We do it for, for you know, give as um, unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. But as they give unto the Lord, there's also the aspect of, you know, taking care of yeah. God's servant Absolutely. to them. And our church has grown tremendously in that over the last several years. And um, there, there have been incremental increases in our uh, income. And, and it's really been a blessing to our family. You know, we were able to purchase a home two years ago. Um, have ne never owning a home before, but the Lord has used them to be a blessing to us as they have learned obedience. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's, a, that's the important aspect of the Christian life. Christian life is the secret of the Christian life is, first of all, dying to self and living as unto Christ. But the secondly is obeying what you know to do, even when you don't want to. Um, and then learning to obey with a cheerful heart. The Bible says, let us abound in this grace, the grace of giving also. God loves a cheerful giver. And so learning to just uh, be a giver yourself rather than a taker definitely helps in ministry. Learn, you know what, if somebody else is sacrificing, I can sacrifice too. Thanks so much, Pastor Houston. And uh, you can view our other conversations with Pastor Houston down in the description below. Click on those links and you can join us on those videos. Thanks so much for watching.